Spoiler warning. This will spoil all of part eight of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure and will contain major spoilers from throughout all previous parts. Enjoy. Part eight of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, Jujolian, was a story about breaking a curse. But now that it's over, you may be left with some questions. Questions like, what does it mean that Wonder of Yu's ability was related to the logic and the reason of the world? Why did destroying it end the Higashikata curse? What was the significance of Joseph Fumi being indirectly named after Joseph Joestar? And why did Josuke have Gobion? Where did it come from? And how could it beat Wonder of Yu's ability? I know that's a lot to throw out all at once, but don't worry, we're going to go through it in order. So, to explain this theory, my interpretation of Jujolian, I want to retell the story from a certain point of view. I will go over the events of the story from a perspective in which they form a single struggle that lasts from 1901 to 2011. Actually, more precisely one could say that the events of Jujolian are an attack. One single attack, which began when a tearful Johnny Joestar set out on a fateful horse ride to save his infant son from an evil fate. This attack was carried forward by a series of coincidences, the flow of good fortune, and through the dreams that individuals shared, ultimately resulting in the eradication of the Higashikata curse. This is the single attack theory, an interpretation of Jujolian. Section 1. Fairness is rules, and rules are power. The attack begins. The year is 1890, and the transcontinental horse race known as the Steel Ball Run will soon draw to a close. Jairus Apelli, stricken with a soon-to-be-mortal wound and armed only with a steel ball, stares down American President, Funny Valentine. They are clashing over the fate of Lucy Steele, whose body has fused with the body of Jesus of Nazareth, the relic known as the Saint's Corpse, causing her to emit a brilliant golden light. Valentine is using his dimension manipulation stand, Dirty Deeds Done Dirt Cheap, or D4C for short, to enshroud himself with the corpse's light, an ability named D4C, Love Train. This is the same combined ability that is currently changing the position of Gyra's wound, driving it towards his heart for Valentine's benefit. Love Train, which derives from the saint's corpse, has the power to attract all things of good fortune towards itself, moving objects, people, and the landscape itself. It also deflects bad fortune away from itself, towards another corner of the world, the zenith of this effect is the light itself. As Valentine explains, all Gyro has to do is step through that current of light, and his wound will be cured, deflected to another person far away. Gyro ignores Valentine's taunt, teaches his friend and protege, Johnny Joestar, one last lesson, and chooses to sacrifice his own life rather than have someone else suffer his misfortune. Later, Jujolian describes this power of the corpse as bringing about removal, an equivalent exchange. Fortune for one person is balanced out by misfortune for another. That is the rule through which the saint's corpse works. It's a heartless rule, and we are told that this is why the corpse was sealed away. After the events of the Steel Ball Run, Johnny Joestar marries Rina Higashikara, daughter of the racist runner-up Norisuke Higashikara, and moves to her hometown of Moria. But just a few short years later, in 1901, Rina is struck by a mysterious illness which causes her to lose her memories and turns her skin hard like stone. This rock disease has apparently affected the firstborn children of the Higashikara family for hundreds of years, though its exact origin isn't revealed in the story. Johnny, desperate, turns to the power that Jairo refused. He steals the saint's corpse. Lucy Steele and members of the Speedwagon Foundation chase after Johnny, but he evades them and ends up performing two equivalent exchanges to save his family. This turns the land of Morio into holy ground, the kind rock humans are attracted to, like the places in America that once housed the parts of the holy corpse. The first exchange occurs at the foot of the Meditation Pine, curing Reno of the disease and leaving behind the power to perform exchanges in the ground itself. However, something goes terribly, improbably wrong. Of all the people in the world that the rock disease could have been shifted onto, it transfers onto Johnny's three-year-old son, George, who is sitting in a carriage nearby. This is seemingly an extreme misfortune, what one could call a calamity. 
A tearful Johnny mounts his horse and places his son on it, atop the briefcase holding the holy corpse. He rides far from his wife, using the power of the horse's gallop to activate the ultimate form of his stand, Tusk, Act 4, which possesses an unstoppable attack. He reflects on how he feels about his son, on the immense happiness George has brought into his life, and on how he would not trade that happiness for anything. Then, Johnny uses Tusk to shoot George, as the light around the corpse flares, initiating an equivalent exchange. The exchange transfers the disease onto Johnny, and he is struck by his own attack, seemingly deflected. Just as the previous equivalent exchange created the unique properties of the grounds near the meditation pine, the second exchange creates the ability Autumn Leaves. Autumn Leaves is a stand that inhabits the ginkgo leaves found in Shakedown Road and causes objects to be moved around spontaneously. This ability's first activation moves a boulder onto Johnny's head, crushing it. George is cured of the disease and goes on to lead a normal life thanks to Johnny's sacrifice. The question is, why did Johnny shoot George with Act 4? And why did all those calamitous things happen immediately afterward? The functioning of the corpse in this scene seems stacked against Johnny in a way that doesn't match how it functions in Steel Ball Run. Perhaps it is the disease itself, the Higashikata family curse which causes the exchanges to go so awry. After all, if the power of the holy corpse is a blessing, wouldn't the other side of that coin be a curse? For every light, there must be shadow, and we have seen plenty of the dark side of the corpse before. Just before all the pieces of the holy corpse were collected, Lucy Steele was in possession of most of it. This granted her the stand, Ticket to Ride. By cutting people with blades made from her tears, Lucy could make their fate favorable to her. Targets of the ability were unable to hurt her, instead hurting themselves in unlikely ways, seemingly on accident. These strings of coincidences caused by Ticket to Ride are also reminiscent of the way that Love Train deflects an attack. Usually, the attack isn't literally transferred anywhere else. Rather, the consequences of the attack are negated, and instead someone else, far away, suffers a proportional and, from their perspective, coincidental misfortune. These effects strongly resemble Wonder of You. The head doctor has no face. That's the kind of person he is. That's the kind of ability All he has. things under heaven and earth, and the connections between them, none of them will be on your side. Even on the right path. A saint who walks free of error can't always avoid evil. That is calamity. Wonder of You is the standability of the Rock Human Toru. It often takes the shape of the head doctor of TG University Hospital, Satoru Akefu. In many ways, this power is the opposite of Love Train. Whereas Love Train can deflect any misfortune that would affect the user, Wonder of You instead brings about misfortune as an attack against its target. They are two aspects of the same power. Anyone who pursues Toru or his stand becomes first in the flow of calamity, first in the list of disasters that are written into the very chain of logic that makes up the world. The visible effect of this is a series of harmful coincidences which often cause far more damage than they reasonably should. The form of the head doctor is this natural calamity energy, which Toru merely co-opted as his own stand. It exists independently of him. That is why Wonder of You remains when Toru is killed, and it also implies that the power pre-existed him. Given that it's the destruction of Wonder of You that breaks the Higashikata curse, or at least that the two events coincide, it seems that the Higashikata curse was a part of this flow of calamity, perhaps before Toru was ever even born. Toru's existence itself may have been a part of the flow of calamity, a host for Wonder of You to help protect it from the infinite rotation. All this might explain why the disease seems to stick so close to the family when exchanged by the corpse. The Higashikatas have been marked for calamity. In a sense, that is what a curse is. So why did Johnny die after the second exchange? Because he was affected by Wonder of You through its connection to the Higashikata curse. The corpse exchanged away the rock disease from George, but Wonder of You's ability ensured that Johnny would be its next target. And why did Wonder of You trigger on Johnny in the first place? Because Johnny attacked it. This, it seems to me, is the true purpose behind Johnny getting on a horse to perform the exchange. He was hoping that at the moment of transfer, his attack could pierce and destroy the disease. This attempt caused Johnny to be moved to the top of the list of calamities. That explains why Johnny became the victim of the exchange, and why the first activation of Autumn Leaves was to kill Johnny. 
but something here still makes no sense. How could Tusk Act 4 be deflected back onto Johnny? After all, Tusk Act 4 is a stand that uses the rotational power of a horse running at its natural gait to generate an infinite rotation. Just go with it. The entire point of this stand's existence in the context of Part 7 was that the infinite rotation is an attack that Love Train couldn't deflect. Therefore, it can't have been the corpse's activation that redirected the shot. And since Wonder of You has a similar nature to the corpse, it is doubtful that it could have accomplished that on its own either. Rather, it seems more in keeping with the various abilities involved that Tusk Act 4 hit Johnny because it still was following the calamity. This is similar to Tusk's behavior in the high voltage arc, where Act 4 moves through a bridge after hitting it, homing in on its true target, Diego, and attacking him from the ground. So too is the shot here merely following its true target, the rock disease and the flow of calamity. This homing attack then triggers Wonder of You a second time, causing a boulder to crush Johnny via autumn leaves. After all, when a stand user dies, their stand ability disappears. Um, usually anyway. That's why Johnny's body is not annihilated by the infinite rotation, and why the attack doesn't continue on to damage Wonder of You. The flow of calamity protects itself by stopping the attack at the source, and Act 4 is seemingly stopped. Section 2 Do you believe in gravity? The spin of good fortune is scattered by the calamity. The reason Tusk's fourth act is able to pierce anything, including dimensional barriers, is that its infinite rotation travels through the power of gravity. In JoJo, gravity isn't only the force that binds the universe at the largest scales. It also refers to all the forces that bind matter together, to the connections between people, and to the powers of time and fate. Within the story, it isn't simply a metaphor either as the climax of Stone Ocean sees Poochie using a place with a specific amount of gravity to gain what might be the most powerful fate-manipulating stand, Made in Heaven, a stand which speeds up time. Gravity in JoJo represents every form of connection and influence, the physical force of gravity simply being a particularly pure version of it. Gravitational forces exerted by the sun determine the path planets take in the sky, and the gravity exerted between people's lives determines the course those lives will take. Even with the power of Tusk, Johnny's nail bullet could have never truly attacked the Calamity energy. Nothing which exists within the reason and logic of the world can beat Wonder of You's form. And for something to defeat that flow of logic, it would have to be something which does not exist in the world. Something like gravity, which can cross even the barriers that divide one universe from another. For the infinite rotation to reach Wonder of You, the attack would have to shed all physical form and all logical connection to the pursuit of the stand. When Johnny dies, Tusk dies with him, but their gravity, their influence, does not. Tusk's spin is infinite and should never end. Not bound by the limitations of people or stands, the infinite rotation is free to exist purely as gravity, the connections between things. The powers involved in Johnny's death create autumn leaves, as mentioned earlier, which ensures that the legend of Johnny Josar is remembered for the next century. Johnny's noble sacrifice is also the first in what becomes a tradition among the Higashikata family. No longer would the family curse claim their children. Now parents could use the ground by the meditation pine to sacrifice themselves instead, echoes of Johnny's original sacrifice. The family commemorates this by always renaming the eldest male in the family to Norisuke, the name of their ancestor who competed in the steel ball run, and by using names that begin with Joe for their men. Perhaps most importantly, George Joestar lives on, and it is through him that Johnny's spirit and his stand power is passed on to future generations. These things survive, and, perhaps, within those connections, the infinite rotation continues, manifesting itself in nearly invisible ways as coincidences. In the shadows of calamity, from a different perspective, the golden spin of good fortune sheds its light. In 1941, Lucy Steele visits Japan in search of the Rokakaka fruit, which can allow for a certain type of equivalent exchange within one body. A damaged body part is healed, but another body part turns to stone and becomes useless. We don't know how or when Lucy first learned of this fruit, but she likely has tracked it down due to her old connection to Johnny. She has followed rumors of a fruit company importing foreign fruits into Morio and found reports of mysterious disappearances in a nearby orchard. The plan is to investigate, the Lucy is dealing with a lung disease and her health is declining. On arrival, Lucy's bags are stolen, 
but the seeming bit of misfortune is inverted when the thief is stopped by Joseph Jostar, Johnny's grandson, who throws his Geta as a weapon to stop the thief. Joseph explains to Lucy the local lore behind this Radio Gaga incident, as the disappearances are known, and agrees to accompany her to the area. This meeting turns out to be crucial when Lucy is attacked by a rock animal shaped like a rail and is only saved by Joseph and his stand, and his Geta. The chance meeting results in Lucy getting close to her goal, but then she sees Toru carrying a pot of Rokakaka beyond some trees. Wonder of usability causes Lucy's condition to suddenly worsen, which in turn forces her to return home to America, a worried Joseph in tow. The flow of calamity ensures that she can never return to pursue Toru, as the United States enters World War II shortly thereafter, stranding Joseph and Lucy until after she passes away. Although the calamity ends up rebuffing Lucy's direct attention, through her chance encounter with Joseph, her efforts are not lost. Not only does she survive the incident, but through these events, Joseph ends up marrying a woman from the Speedwagon Foundation named Susie Q before moving back to Japan. It is probably because of this family connection that Joseph and Susie's daughter, Holly Jo Starkira, ends up doing research on the Rokakaka even before she has any direct contact with a rock human. Holly's own children, Yoshikage and Kei, inherit incredibly powerful stance and they both have a hand in the destruction of Wonder of You. There is another, far less direct, far more coincidental connection that results from Joseph and Lucy's chance meeting. Joseph's ever-relevant Geta is left behind on the field, and is later found by a young boy. Joseph's name, written in kanji, sticks in that boy's head, and when in 1991 his daughter is left to raise a child on her own, he suggests a particular reading of those kanji as the child's name, Joseph Umi. It's unknown if Joseph Umikujo has a blood tie to Johnny. He could, through his absent father Sadafumi, but perhaps his indirect link to Joseph and further interaction with the Joestars is enough to grant him the Joestar birthmark he bears. After all, we see a similar thing happen in Part 6, although there the circumstances involved may be a bit more extreme. Either way, Joseph Umi suffers misfortune in his life. Abandoned by his father and neglected by his mother, Joseph Umi nearly drowns as a child. At the hospital, Josefumi's life is saved by Holly, who gets Yoshikage to use his incredibly precise exploding bubble stand, Killer Queen, to destroy a blood vessel blockage in Josefumi's brain. Yet another life saved because of the events in 1941, and, less directly, the events in 1901. Through this confluence of cascading coincidences, owing to the fortune of the Golden Spin, Josefumi's life was saved by the daughter of his namesake. Perhaps it is because of this fortunate connection that Joseph Umi ends up with a stand, soft and wet, which produces bubbles that are superficially similar to Killer Queen's, though their ability is different. The form of his stand certainly suggests that Joseph Umi has inherited the Joestar spirit. But it's not just the Joestar side of the family that brushes with calamity. When Jobin Higashikara, the eldest son three generations after Johnny's time, begins to experience the effects of the rock disease as a child, it's in the middle of a period of violent bullying. This causes him to accidentally awaken and use his stand, Speed King. Speed King can build up heat at a point and release it all at once, a very dangerous ability which fatally wounds one of the bullies. Jobin's mother, Kato, covers the accident up and uses the dying child as a recipient for Jobin's disease. Jobin takes his mother's example to heart and learns to be ruthless. These events would eventually be revealed, landing Kato in jail and leading to a division in the family. Also, around this time, a fruit farmer living near the Higashikata grounds goes to investigate a rock insect belonging to Toru and gets swept up in the flow of calamity. The farmer dies in a landslide, leaving behind an orphan son, Raima Mizuku, who is aided by Norisuke Higashikata IV, Jobin's father, and goes on to become his personal botanist and later a crucial ally. Here too, we see fortune as an offshoot of a calamity. Toru isn't completely passive either. He has by this time formed an organization of rock humans to help him research and distribute the Rokakaka. Rock humans are hard to organize because their lonesome childhoods, as determined by their life cycle, and their long periods of vulnerable hibernation tend to make them distrustful of others, but Toru's abilities and leadership seem to have been sufficient to bring them in line. It is made clear, though, that there is no friendship in this group. Rather, Toru describes himself as the lone rock on top of the others, he alone enduring and preserving all the memories of the world. During his college years, Jobin befriends the rock human architect Yotsuyu Yagiyama, and through him he starts an association with the distribution branch of Toru's organization. This leads Jobin down a darker path, 
a path he has been primed for thanks to the tragedies in his young life, one where the Higashikadas would acquire power by dealing mystery to others. Yet, ultimately, this relationship would prove disastrous for the Rock humans. Meanwhile, the hospital where Holly was conducting her Rokakaka research is taken over by the research branch of the Rokakaka organization. She is slowly poisoned with the fruit, creating tiny exchanges within her body that progressively turn more and more of her into stone. The overall effect is very similar to the rock disease, causing memory loss and hardened skin. Calamity threatens the Joestar Kiras and the Higashikadas at every turn, and the results of good fortune are scattered and ununified. Without some kind of intervention, Toru's power of Calamity would continue unchallenged. Section 3. Righteous Actions, Born of Reality. The Spin is Reborn. We should talk a bit more about what Tusk was, and what the spin is. The spin is a special way of rotating an object, which causes it to spin for a long time, and creates special vibrations that allow a user to manipulate objects and living things in extremely precise and physics-breaking ways. Moreover, it seems somewhat divine in nature, most clearly alluded to in Jesus' statement, Everything rotates if it's circular, which he says in response to being asked by Joseph of Arimathea if he will ever see Jesus again. This he pairs with a map to where his body parts will be scattered in the future, and, as we have seen, those separate parts were gathered together again. A cycle. We first see the spin being used by Gyra Zapelli through his steel balls, but for the purposes of Jojolian, the most relevant spin user is Johnny through his stand tusk. Tusk is a stand granted to Johnny by the Saint's corpse, and for most of Part 7, Johnny loses access to his stand if he is not in possession of a corpse part. At first, Tusk only allows Johnny to channel the spin into his nails, shooting them out like bullets. But after he learns to spin his nails according to the golden ratio found in nature, like Gyra does with the steel balls, he gains Act 2. A bullet hole created by Tusk Act 2 moves, homing in on the original target of the nail bullet. This ability hints at Tusk's connection to fortune since the homing bullet holes are a form of equivalent exchange. They can redirect harm like the corpse's wound relocation. The similarities between these two abilities are made clear when Johnny uses Act 2 to exchange a wound the corpse was relocating to his heart. Act 2 carries the damage away, shifting it onto a tree instead. To gain Act 3, Johnny shoots himself, thus subjecting his body to an equivalent exchange. This act lets him enter the holes his stand creates, letting him occupy a space within Tusk's rotation. It's after this point that Tusk truly becomes Johnny's, as he no longer needs to be in possession of the corpse to access the stand. This left Johnny primed to achieve the final form of his stand. A horse galloping at its natural pace can produce the energy of the golden rotation, and by adding this second source of spin to their own, a spin user can create the highest power of rotation. When Gyro uses this rotation with his steel balls, it results in Ball Breaker, a stand power capable of attacking even through Love Train, aging its target. This is an example of the spin's command over time, and hence, gravity. However, that power is defeated when the steel ball passes through Love Train's golden light, causing it to no longer be a sphere, and hence no longer capable of the perfect spin. When Johnny uses this power, it is not bound by the physical form of the steel ball, only his nail bullets which channel his stand power, and this results in an attack that cannot be stopped. Tusk, Act 4. After Gyro's death, Johnny manages to achieve Act 4, and he shoots Funny Valentine with it. Valentine retreats behind Love Train, and although the barrier seems to block most of the damage at first, Act 4 is not deflected. It clings to the barrier, and as Valentine watches, horrified, Johnny's stand finds a gap in the barrier and starts wrenching it apart. Through great effort, the stand breaks into the space within the light, and manages to strike Valentine's stand. Dirty deeds done dirt cheap. After this, Valentine uses D4C's ability to manipulate dimensions to try to avoid the consequences of Johnny's stand, passing his memories and stand onto another version of himself. But the President's fate was sealed as soon as he was subjected to the infinite rotation. No matter how many universes he crosses, or how many versions of him are pulled into the situation, Tusk's rotation never stops chasing Funny Valentine. The events I have described so far seem to be like Tusk clinging to the outside of Love Train. After Johnny's death, Tusk's gravity kept manifesting as good fortune, and although Wonder of You continued to scatter this influence away, the golden spin clung to the world at the edges of the Calamity's defensive ability. 
The close parallels between the Part 2 and Part 8 versions of Joseph Joestar suggest that the latter may have inherited the spin from Johnny, just as Part 2 Joseph inherited the ripple from Jonathan Joestar. Joseph's stand may be a manifestation of this, having a similar appearance to Hermit Purple, which conducted the ripple. Joseph's own grandson, Yoshikage Kira, may have also inherited this power, visible in his stand's bubbles, which are ideal spherical conduits for the spin. Joseph Umi, likewise, seems to have also inherited this kind of spin stand, if indeed that's what these are. Tusk's gravity is also present in less direct ways among the other members of the Kira and Higashikata families, who carry different aspects of Johnny's spirits, and as Toru's minions close in, that invisible power searches for a gap. It all begins with flying fish in the South Sea. In 2009, one such fish causes an accident on a cargo ship that leads that ship's doctor, Yoshikage Kira, to discover bleeding garden rocks. These rocks were actually Aisho Danenjiyama, a rock human from the distribution branch of the Rokakaka organization in his dormant state. Once on land, Yoshikage investigates, and soon he finds out about the Rokakaka fruit. This is, of course, the same fruit that has been making his mother sick, but ignorant of that, Yoshikage believes that the fruit may be able to cure her illness. He enlists the help of Joseph Fumi, who is happy to do anything he can to save Holly, as he owes her his life. With the use of Joseph Fumi's stand, soft and wet, which has the power to produce bubbles that bind things together, they are able to replace a branch of the Rokakaka plant with a fake, and graft the real one onto a tree to grow more fruits. Unbeknownst to them, the tree that they have grafted the branch onto is on the miraculous Higashikata grounds. This deception works for months, but when the 2011 earthquake hits Japan, walleyes rise up around Morio, a representation of the land's holy power and Tusk's enduring influence, and the Rokakaka plant withers. From this, the rock humans realize that they have been tricked, and that a branch has been stolen. Somehow. I'll be honest, I never really understood that part. Anyway. Members of the distribution branch track down Josefumi and Yoshikage and corner them on a boat, wherein Tamaki Damo uses his stand, Vitamin C, to disable and torture them. Yoshikage encourages Josefumi to flee without him, as he doesn't judge his own wounds to be survivable. Then he uses his killer queen's sheer heart attack to save Josefumi. Yoshikage Hira goes so far as to shield Josefumi from the explosion with his body, causing shrapnel to be embedded deep into his skull. Joseph Fumi, however, determined to save Holly's son, manages to drag Yoshikage's body to where the grafted fruit was, though he has to fight off the Aphex twins in the process. When Joseph Fumi feeds Kira the fruit, he discovers that it has mutated. The grafting done by Soft and Wet has combined the properties of the land with the properties of the fruit, creating a new Rokakaka fruit that allows for equivalent exchanges between people. This new fruit is, in a way, a unification of the legacy that Johnny left behind in the ground of Morio and the influence of his descendants' quest. Moreover, Josefumi himself and hence his stand exist only due to the good fortune of having met Holly. This fortune, carried to him via kanji written on a forgotten geta, makes Josefumi's fate a factor that could have never been accounted for. As he himself says, ever since the day he should have drowned, Josefumi has not really existed anyway. He is now bound up tightly in the chain of logic that makes up the world. This is the gap that the rotation widens. Josefumi Kujo chooses to sacrifice himself for Yoshikage Kira, willing to exchange away everything in his body. He throws his all into this hope, despite all the evidence pointing to Yoshikage being beyond the point of help. When Funny Valentine was explaining himself to Johnny Joestar, he claimed that all the deaths in the Steel Ball Run were necessary sacrifices to achieve the goal of the corpse. And, in this moment, with this double sacrifice made in faith and motivated by love, an aftershock of the earthquake breaks the ground that Joseph Fumi and Yoshikage are on, and they tumble into the blessed ground. A calamity. Both Yoshikage and Joseph Fumi are buried. In a sense, they die. A miracle. One of the bodies survives, but the compounded exchanges are so thorough that it is impossible to say just who survived here. This is a new person, essentially. A person brought into this world miraculously, as Toru was by the calamity's chain of logic. As I said earlier, it seems to me that both Yoshikage and Joseph Fumi had inherited the golden spin from Joseph, who had inherited from Johnny. Their bodies have now also been subjected to an equivalent exchange, and this new person has inherited two sources of the golden spin. 
These are all the same requirements fulfilled by Johnny to achieve the infinite rotation of his Tusk Act IV. The infinite spin has been reborn. Without memories, without a past, this new man is free to act without triggering wonder of youth. But without any connections, how can he begin to act? How can he use the flow of good fortune if he does not know of it? He reaches out for something to grab onto. Section 4. That bubble doesn't exist anywhere. The attack finds its mark. Wonder of Yu's Flow of Calamity is not only an offensive and defensive ability, it can also lead Toru to his objective. Years before the start of Jujolian, Toru comes across a young girl, Yasuho Hirose. Though she won't be aware of it for quite some time, she possesses the stand Paisley Park, which can gather information and move through communication lines. Toru takes advantage of Yasuo's abilities, using it to find someone who will fit his goals, in the guise of searching for someone specific. Once she finds a medical professional whose disappearance could be easily hid, one Satoru Akefu, he declares that he has found his path. It's presumably after this that Wonder of You takes on the appearance of Satoru Akefu and starts running the TG University Hospital. Toru would later manipulate Yasuo using rock insects, and he dated her in high school after she had forgotten about him. This grooming seems to have been motivated both by Yasuo's useful ability as well as a twisted impulse towards connection, even if it involves the manipulation of a young kid. Ten years later, Yasuo is hiding from her clingy ex-boyfriend, Yoshio Higashikata, when she comes across a man half-buried in the ground by a recent aftershock. The arm reaching out of the ground is an agent of good fortune, Tusk's gravity, which will not only give Yasuo an out from Yoshi's childish clinginess, but will also enable her to fight Toru's far more nefarious machinations. Despite her misgivings, she takes pity on the man in the ground and takes his hand, thus starting the events of Jujolian. Yasuo and the man form a quick bond, and she gives him a name, Josuke, after a dog she used to have. She picks his name because she judges him to have a good nature. This also happens to be the birth name of Norisuke Higashikata IV. After a sudden ambush, in which Josuke learns that he is somehow connected to Yoshikage Kira, Josuke is adopted by the Higashikata family. This means that Josuke is by coincidence named after his new adoptive father, just as Josefumi was indirectly named for Joseph. During that fight, he also becomes aware of his stand. The look and name of a stand, Soft and Wet, are the same as Joseph Fumi's, but the power is different. Soft and Wet's bubbles have been mixed with Killer Queens, creating bubbles that neither destroy nor buy. Rather, they can plunder things and properties from within what they touch. They have also created something else, but it will be a long time before Josuke realizes this. The main plot of the first half of Jujolian is Josuke forming connections that reveal the past we have already discussed. He slowly gains a place in the Higashikata family fights and befriends Holly's daughter Kei, who is undercover as the Higashikata maid, going by the name Nijimura. He faces the perils of Shakedown Road, and he eliminates the members of the distribution branch. From this, he learns how the Kira and Higashikata families are related, about equivalent exchange and the role it had in creating him, the story of Johnny Joestar, as well as the existence of the Rokakaka and the events that happened right before he was born. Once the existence of the new Rokakaka is revealed, Josuke, now solidly allied with Norisuke, enlists the help of Rai Mamazuku to help identify the branch that the fruit came from. The research branch goes on the offensive, seeking to use the new Rokakaka themselves, and going so far as to attack Mitsuba Higashikara, Jobin's wife, at the hospital. Jobin, for his own part, tries to get ahead in this struggle by secretly swapping the branches of the Rokakaka with the help of Paper Moon King, the stand of his only son, Surugi which can take away people's ability to tell objects apart. He successfully hides the branch at the Higashikata home. Then, after dismantling the organization and reforging the connections he had inherited, Josuke and company finally learn of the existence of the head doctor. They pursue him, but in short order, Wonderview rebuffs Rai, Josuke, and Yasuo. The flow of calamity starts to bring the Rokakaka to Toru through Ojiro's unhinged inclinations, but Jobin kills him and his girlfriend to keep that from happening. He also tells his mother, Kado, about the Niro Kakaka, and she tells him to keep it hidden from his father. Jobin's interference with the flow of wonder of you, however, would not go unpunished. Soon, more calamities arrive, attacking Mitsuba and triggering Tsurugi's curse. Yasuo also arrives at the scene, and in the ensuing chaos, Norisuke finds out about the murders his son committed. He uses his stand, King Nothing, which can visualize smells, to reveal Jobin's crimes, but Jobin burns his neck, incapacitating him and splintering the family. Jobin attempts to retaliate against the Calamity energy, but this of course results in near instant death. 
It is some time before the characters involved start to realize the full breadth and power of Wonder of Usability, and though they have managed to come close to it, to halfway enter into its defenses, all involved suffer heavy injuries as they attempt to cross the last stretch. Josuke and Yasuko only recover thanks to the Rokakaka, and presumably Rai's injuries are able to be healed thanks to his stand, Doggy Style, which allows him to manipulate his own body like strength. After Josuke is rescued from his injuries by Holly, he resolves to save her life, accepting her as his mother and taking up Josefumi's and Joshikage's quest. Following her advice, instead of pursuing the head doctor, he makes the doctor chase after him, leading him to the Rokakaka lab. He has laid a trap in this room using a stand, and Rai also makes it there before the head doctor. But just like in the Steel Ball run, to go any further, sacrifices must be made. Yoshihiga Shikara has already sacrificed his own arm to restore Yasuo's via the new Rokakaka, but when Yasuo realizes Toru's true nature, she tries to inform Josuke, which triggers Wonder of You. This manifests in Joshu's intense regret and jealousy, which leads to him attacking Yasuo in an attempt to stop her phone call. Yasuo pushes through, and once the call is made, it causes a piece of a plane to fall towards her. The call is to Kei Nijimura, who is at the hospital. Knowing that Holly had used her brief moments of lucidity to help Josuke, Kei decides to take the phone to him, despite knowing this will trigger Wonder of You. In the meantime, Rai has closed the distance to the head doctor, and after realizing that his father was killed by the flow of calamity, he launches an attack. This results in Josuke's bubbles shredding his body. This is a calamity, as the wounds are fatal, but Rai himself points out that it is also good fortune. For in that moment, Rai realizes that within Josuke's stand, there is an invisible rotation, a power of good fortune that originates from the golden spin. After Rai's sacrifice, Kei arrives on the scene. Just as the Calamity triggers her stand ability, born this way, which creates a freezing wind when an object is open. This activation causes some of Josuke's bubbles to freeze, and one hurts Wonder of Yu's head, proving their ability to do so. A Calamity immediately kills Kei, but the phone makes it to Josuke, and thanks to that, Paisley Park is able to tell Josuke about Toru. Josuke at last is aware of both the greater power of his stand and the true identity of his enemy. In Part 5, Golden Wind, Several members of Bruno Bucciarati's gang die while trying to obtain the arrow which will allow them to defeat King Crimson's ability to erase time. Giorno Giovanna states that even if his friends were killed, their actions have not been annihilated. Righteous actions, born of truth, will never be erased. It is the superficial nature of evil that will be annihilated in the end. Just like Giorno's teammates, Josuke's friends have perished but their wills have been passed on to him. Thanks to them, at last, the invisible rotation has made it inside Wonder of Use defenses. The rotation that was started by Johnny 110 years ago has shed all connections to its origin. Traveling through fate, along Josephine's life which did not truly exist anywhere, the resulting power itself also does not exist anywhere. And not being part of the chain of reason within the world, these bubbles can go beyond that logic. Soft and wet, go beyond. A stand born of dreams that outlive memories. Faced with this incomprehensible power, Wonder of You runs away. Though by now, it is too late. It is Wonder of You and Toru that are caught in the flow of the invisible spin. Josuke's next shot misses the head doctor, but Toru is undone by his own past. Paisley Park is a stand that can travel across electrical lines and communication channels. In other words, it travels through certain types of connection, and Soft and Wet's invisible rotation can go beyond these connections, traveling through gravity as it already has been for over a century. Yasuo's stand guides the shot back to her location, where it comes out of her phone and pierces through Toru, also causing the plane part to barely miss her. Toru desperately attacks Yasuo, attempting an exchange to save his life, but a second shot of Gobion, guided by Paisley Park, rips right through his body, fatally wounding him. The ability which allowed Toru to find his ideal identity has now led to his demise. This flow has not finished either. The force of Gobion launches Toru into the Higashikata garage, where Kado Higashikata weeps over the death of her son, Jobin. Toru tries to provoke Kado, telling her that Jobin's dreams were not realized in his life, but Kado does not take the bait. She does not try to take vengeance for her son, which would have triggered Wonder of You and allowed Toru to exchange with her. Instead, she brings Surugi out of her stand, making him the other part of the exchange, and feeds him sap from the crushed Rokakaka branch, tilting the exchange in Surugi's favor. This is an attack, and Wonder of You triggers, but it's too late to save Toru. Kado is the final victim of the Calamity, the final sacrifice to end the curse. Toru desperately begs Yasuo for help, but he dies while seeing a memory play out before his eyes. 
Toru always said that in the end, all that remained were dreams and memories. He believed it was his role alone in the world to witness those memories. But now, he too fades. The surviving members of the Higashikata family gather around Norisuke in the garage, including a newly cured Tsurugi. Norisuke's injuries don't run deep, as Jobin did not intend to actually kill him, and Tsurugi declares that he's going to be fine. Just then, the headless doctor reappears from underneath a car. Wonder of You moves on to Norisuke, making his injuries worse. Yasuo at last realizes that the logic of the calamity is infinite, a natural law that exists outside of Toru. Just before Wonder of You can finish Norisuke off, however, the ambulances from the hospital arrive, and Josuke along with them. He takes aim, and fires. The Calamity has been driven into this corner by the sacrifices made by the Higashikadas and the Kiros, inheritors of the spin of good fortune created by Johnny's original sacrifice. Now the rotation has gone beyond Johnny, beyond bonds of blood and fortune, beyond memory, and now thanks to the enduring selfless spirits of the two families, Soft and Wet will finally go beyond the logic of the calamities. The shot hits home, Wonder of You disappears, and the curse is at last broken. Conclusion There are still questions left unanswered by this interpretation. Many details throughout Jujolian are left hanging, and likely most will not come back. Some are remnants of abandoned storylines, while others may have been purely atmospheric elements. Some questions are a little more overarching, though. Clearly, there is some sort of shared nature between the Rokakaka, the Rock Disease, and Rock Humans, but the origin of this connection isn't clear. Looking towards the future, Holly's fate seems uncertain. She is still sick at the end of the part, but she hasn't died, and the story leaves her in an ambiguous state. This is a strange lack of resolution, either positive or negative, given Josuke's strong declaration about saving her. Perhaps we'll never learn about the end of Holly Joestar Kira. But I think there's a chance we will in the upcoming Part 9, which right now has the title of Jojo Lands. After all, Jojo Lane ends on a note that encourages hope. Earlier, I called Soft and Wet a stand born of dreams that outlive memories. That description was inspired by a conversation that happened in the last chapter of Jojo Lane. After breaking the curse, Josuke and Yasuo come across Josefumi Kujo's mom. Josuke isn't inclined to talk to her, as he thinks that since he has never recovered any of Josefumi or Kira's memories, he is neither of them, he is Josuke, the man who came from the ground. Moreover, he doesn't believe she would still look for Josefumi. He also disagrees that Josuke's identity is solely his memories. Rather, she believes that dreams could be even more fundamental than memories. Josuke carries the final dreams of Josefumi and Yoshikage, and he also carries with him the wills of Johnny Joestar, Rai Mamazuku, Kei Nijimura, and perhaps even unknown others. Righteous actions born of truth are never erased. They go on to become dreams, shaping the world even after one's memories fade from it. To give Josuke hope, she retrieves pictures from inside Josefumi's mother's phone, pictures she has been using to search for her son. In the end, the highest power the Holy Corpse and the Rokakaka ever possessed was the power of equivalent exchange. Every bit of fortune gained by those methods, through divinity and natural law, brings corresponding misery. But perhaps dreams can do better, and through dreams that are shared between people, Things which cannot be seen are created. Things that can go beyond even the calamitous logic of this world. So, too long didn't watch? What is soft and wet go beyond other than Tusk Act 4 persevering? <laughs> God, I'm an idiot. Hey, thank you so much for watching my video. If you made it this far, please consider leaving a like or a comment or even subscribing. I initially did this as a spur of the moment thing. I didn't know anything about editing when I started, just wanted to talk about Jojo, but I really liked it and I want to do more things like this. So please subscribe. I have more thoughts about Jojo, about anime in general, about fiction in general. And if you really liked it and you'd like to see me make a lot more of these and make them in better quality, maybe check out my Patreon page, which is linked down below. Thank you so much once again and have a good one.